but they also already developed the competitive grounds, this hardly no <coughs> and technology that they are willing to share. And then the fourth one would be the compatibility, that means that the agent researcher and the technology transfer has to happen, but it has to be in time. Because if we talk about money, it's difficult to start. But we said in time, everyone's kind of happy to do that. So this is more that we always talk about in time. Okay. Next. So you may already realize that for the drug discovery nowadays, a lot of challenges. I address the three because I don't want to worry you too much. But uh, actually, one of them is difficulty in access to the bio resources because you may aware already of the ABS, Navigator Protocol. Actually, that were, were the mechanisms that were created to make sure that you know we know how to do it and we do not have trouble. But actually, it creates problems because no one knows what it is, and then you know people who don't know or know a little. They worry already, so they stop using my resources. So that's the one problem. And the one, the other one is like lack of technology. So that happens in the country just like us. We don't have much technology, but we have a lot of resources. But how can these two meet, right? And the third one is okay to do the natural products. You you also realize that you know 30% of the drugs in the market right now is from natural products. But it takes like 20 years or more to develop the natural products to the drug, right? So it's kind of happens to me. <coughs> so this kind of thing, how can we you know, overcome these challenges? Next, please. So I want to share with you that you know, the first step, we want to make the guidelines and what, how it works with the guidelines, okay? So we want to, uh, I want to guide you through the goals and the, the protocol that we made and the principle of it with the very time limited. Next, please. So I want to give you an example of biotech NASA. Okay? So we have culture collection. You all might have culture collection. And we all also set up the utilization platform that we can you know, evaluate our resources, uh, maybe grow them in different culture uh, uh, conditions like fermentation, extract, <coughs> uh, chemicals, uh, do the bioassays, do the chemical profile analysis, do the you know, like a chemical structure analysis. And then we probably go on with the in situ uh, discovery as well, which is a computer based analysis to find out more of the genes, what they do, and how can we, um, you know, get the discovery of the very special compounds that can do such a wonderful thing in your bioassay. And then out of this, all of these methods that we have, we create, next please. What we create is a lot of libraries. Libraries of cultures, library of, you know, like collections of uh, uh, bioactive compounds, or the, even the information. So with that, it just sits in your institutes. It never means anything else, because what we, like for example, in biotech, we are already only interested in anti-TB, tuberculosis, anti dengue anti-dengue, anti the malaria, and maybe some of the bad antibiotics. But not other things, because we don't have any other assays. But how can you know we actually utilize fully utilize our resources that sit in our space? Right? So everyone has that in our way. Next please. So that's how we together create this kind of uh, you know idea, how can we share? So what we thought that it would be good to set a network that we could share the resources, share the information that we have, and as well as the facility and the services. So you just listen, you just hear my voice just now. Before that, no. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You know, okay. You, so you know I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I'm going. So to to have this shared facility, it will be beneficial to us because it will give us opportunity to you know, expedite our drug discovery and also build up our human <coughs> capacity, right? But it will be even better, next please, that if we can have a pharmaceutical company or person who knows what they want to join and then also share <coughs> with us with this kind of network, right? So this is how <coughs> we think that it will be good to fit um, our network. 
Yes, please. So we set up the guidelines for to work together in the network and also work together with the companies. Because everyone worried about company, companies also worried about working with us. So we kind of set up the boundaries between the two groups of people. Right? So with this complicated guideline, I just want to show you that what it's not that complicated. Basically, you just have to set up the agreement between main parties. And there are three parties here. First is the NPDD member. So it means that national products for drug discovery members. So it could be the you know, research institutes, for example, here in Thailand, research institutes like Biotech or Tunabon or Mahindo University, they are the you know, our NPDD members. And there will be NPDD ASAP or ASAP. This ASAP is actually from aggregate service access point. So in short, they are just like a coordinator. Okay. So this ASAP will coordinate between NPDD members and, their, and them. And also ASAP will coordinate with the users. So for example, if the company want to do the project with us, they don't have to talk with biotech. They will talk with ASAP. So it will kind of simplify the stage and the contact point for each party. Okay, so that's the idea. And the NPDD could expand to many countries. Could be to Thailand, to Japan, to many countries. The NPDD, international NPDD has to have like you know committee, like a central. So to do to to go next please. So to the benefits from this NPDD would be like, you know from the small compounds of each collection that they have, they can create a larger compound with the you know, integrated uh, network that we have. And with the small screen facility that maybe Thailand has, we can expand our facility to connect with other countries as well. So that's the benefits. Next, please. And also, when we talk about the benefit sharing, <coughs> we can actually put everything in the agreement either between the ASAP and the NPDD <coughs> member or the ASAP with the users. So we can even say like, okay, the result will come from the member to the ASAP, but we will not send the result directly to the users. It has to go to the ASAP first. And we can even say that you cannot uh, open this result to the public until one year later or something. You know, you can put anything in this agreement. So it allows the flexibility between any other partners. Okay, so this is how we, we, we work with that. Next, please. So the, the NPD network is actually the structure that we established for international collaboration for the drug discovery. So, uh, the country who wish to join this kind of collaboration has to agree on the term and condition under the NPDD network agreement. So once they join, they have to follow whatever the guidelines is. And NPDD ASAPs in of each country will act as the operational liaison among the network nodes of each country and between the NPDD ASAP of NPD network and users to assist in performing managerial functions in compliance with the national policies and strategies. So, and each country, maybe they have a national nodes, work under the national <coughs> agreement with the NPD ASAP to promote the research on the drug discovery within the country. So you can see that, you know, uh, in the country they have their own management. They don't have to go out and talk with other people. They just talk with the country. And there will be like a kind of middleman that will talk with everyone. Okay. So I want to give you examples so to make you understand better. Next please. So I will give the example of Thailand. Okay. So Thailand, we appoint T cells, uh, Thailand um, Life uh, Excellence Center, a uh, center of excellence for life science as the ASAP. Okay. So they are perfect because they are not researchers, they have money. <coughs> So they can, 
provide the resources that we want to the, to the nodes, and they are good at agreement or you know negotiation with other people, so they are appointed at the ASAP. So um, in the, this case, the, once the, we have the, once ASAP will get some you know projects from the user, they will distribute the work to the nodes under the uh, under the agreement with the national nodes. And with the national, with the NPD network, they will probably have their own members. So they can maybe like, you know, distribute the resources under the deposit form or the, you know, under the term and condition. So everything has been uh, set up and agreed upon. Next, please. <coughs> Yeah, so this is the, the route. So first, user submit the proposal to NTDD ASAP or TCELS. And then ASAP will review the proposal. And then number three, ASAP will notify the user of project that okay, this project will be okay and the project agreement will be set up. Okay, so that's one project agreement will be signed between TCELS and the user. And then ASAP will disseminate the project activity to national nodes based on the capability under the research agreement. So they will distribute the research agreement to each nodes. So they know their role and function under this. And then the material transfer agreement has to be transferred between the nodes if there are such things happen in the activity. Okay, so that's what happens. Next, please. Okay, next. So how about the results? So what's happened is, for example, in this case, ECDD will be the one who screen uh, everything, and Biotech will send the, the, the natural products to ECDD, right? So they, the ECDD cannot send the result to the user, but they will have to send to Biotech, and then send the result to T-cells, because they have agreement, right? And then the result will be sent from T cell to the user. So that's the kind of result. But how about the benefit sharing? The user will agree <coughs> with the T cells already that how the benefit should be shared, and T cell will also agree within the country how the benefit will be shared. So basically the user doesn't have to deal with the nodes and you know very complicated, they will deal with only one stop. This is another case that you know you don't have to do with multilateral uh, collaboration. You can also do with one uh, person. For example, if the user company wants to work only with biotech, they can they will have to go to T cells anyway because this is how the agreement will will uh, uh, you know agree upon. So basically, user will deal with T cells. T cell will deal with biotech, and you know, and in that line. Next, please. And also the benefit sharing will go to that as well. Um, as well as the nodes that Biotech has, we have to follow through these uh, flows. Next, please. So with that, I just want to conclude that, you know, with, uh, this kind of complicated uh, flow of the benefit sharing is kind of simplified for the user because there are only two documents that will make between the user and ASAP, which is project proposal and project agreement, or and user MTA, ETA, if there is a transfer of materials. Because some cases, like you know, we probably have to transfer, uh, the company has to transfer the cells to Thailand, so they use this ETA with the T cells. As well as the NPC <coughs> network, uh, they have to have many agreements because there are so many activities inside, but no one has to know. It's it can include project agreement, research agreement, NCD, uh, DTA, NTA, as well as the deposit and agreement for the notes. Next, please. So with that, we have a lot of benefits from this guideline. We can overcome the limits of the you know, fragmentation of the individual policies in each uh, in the country, <coughs> as well as it can have access to diverse uh, diversities um, and. Uh, 
the staff, they always ensure the uh, CDD and Nagoya protocol has to be in uh, compliance together with the national and international regulations. And lastly, it will you know, allow the friendly international collaboration uh, between you know, outside and inside. And then we also have the uh, scientific can be you know, move forward. We don't have to worry about uh, who's the result is because in the end, everything has to be you know, uh, distributed uh, with the uh, equitable you know, agreement. Next. So to conclude with this kind of network, we can establish the collection of compounds within the countries because we kind of like have the effort to do the big network and also we have a screening platform. We can expand our own platform that can be transferred from the Japanese companies within the country in uh, to Thailand, as well as that we can have uh, you know uh, larger uh, facility and also the resources uh, for the drug discovery as well in terms of collaboration with others. Uh, so with that, we think that if we are moving toward the open resource and open innovation under the CDD and ABS regulations. I think that's it for now. Thank you very much.